Aircraft are proving more and more useful in the work of protecting Canada's forests. They are used a great deal to detect forest fires as well as helping in their control. They can be used to drop water if there is a lake nearby, or in dry areas they can carry fire retardant chemicals. Aircraft are used in different ways by each province. Quebec has equipped several amphibious cansos with water carrying tanks. Some have tanks mounted under the wings carrying 650 gallons of water. Another type has been fitted with interior tanks having a capacity of 800 gallons. The interior tanks have proved more effective. They can be filled more quickly and they do not cut down the speed of the plane as much as the exterior tanks. Saskatchewan has specially trained firefighters, their renowned smoke jumpers, who parachute to fires in remote areas. With few lakes to operate from, planes are used to carry the men to the locality of the fire and their equipment is dropped after them. British Columbia uses the Avenger and the giant Martin Mars, a converted wartime bomber capable of carrying 6,000 gallons of water. Fire ranger stations are finding that helicopters can save a lot of time and hard work. They can deliver men and equipment much closer to a fire than fixed wing aircraft. An air traffic control center is necessary to supervise their operations. A helicopter rising vertically in the path of a plane, particularly in smoke, could cause a disaster. At any fire ranger station in Canada, the pilots have become an essential part of the summer's operation. A good fire pilot must have a great deal of intensive training and many years of experience. Pontoon planes are used almost exclusively in Ontario where there are plenty of lakes dotted through the forest areas. Aircraft are expensive and to make the best use of them requires the fullest cooperation between the pilot and the chief forest ranger. It is up to the pilot to decide if the weather is safe for flying. Otherwise, the chief ranger works out a system of regular flight patrols that will supplement the work of the fixed lookout towers. There are sure to be some areas of forest that cannot be seen from any of the towers. Days of low visibility, heat haze and smoke haze reduce the efficiency of the towers. This leaves larger areas to be covered by planes. Daily flights are necessary, two or even three a day in very dry weather. Maps showing the areas of greatest fire danger are useful in plotting flight patrols. Sometimes a plane can follow the path of an electrical storm, checking for fires started by lightning. In the radio room, the operator maintains contact with planes, lookout towers, and other headquarters. This work is conducted according to the rules of the Department of Transport. Both otters and beavers are used extensively in Ontario and the Maritimes. The otter is larger, carrying up to 10 firefighters. On the first flight of the day, the pilot checks with the radio operator before takeoff to be sure the equipment is working properly. Uh, Pembroke, ODW, radio and time check. Are you ready? Okay. And the time is 0937. Roger, ODW.
Detection patrols are usually carried out at 1,500 feet above the terrain. As well as looking for fires, the pilot makes it his business to assess the fire risks, the dryness of the forest, the amount of humidity in the air, any industrial activity in the area. High tension lines are checked carefully and tourist playgrounds and camping sites are given special attention. The presence of patrol planes over these areas often has a good effect on campers, causing them to be more careful about fire hazards. Every 15 minutes, radio contact is made with the nearest ranger station. Uh, Pembroke, go DW over McKay Township. Over McKay Township, Roger. Roger, ODW. At the same time, the beaver may be used on a different patrol route, carrying supplies for the local conservation officer or servicing remote lookout towers. Planes can be of help in many ways, contributing to the smooth operation of the entire firefighting system. About 80% of all forest fires are started by people traveling or working in the forests. In these cases, firefighters can usually get there without much trouble. The other 20% of forest fires are caused by lightning, often in an area where there are no roads, no trails of any kind for miles around. Lightning fires, for this reason, are more likely to get out of control before a ground crew can reach them. Uh, Pembroke, Cody W. Cody W, Pembroke. Roger, reporting fire over Master Township, about 20 miles west of Pembroke. I'll give you an FP-41 as soon as I can. Uh, Roger, ODW. The pilot has to gather a great deal of information. The kind of timber that is burning, the best means of access for the ground crew, the nearest lake large enough for a plane to land on, and its distance from the fire. The pilot can use an aerial estimator to determine the size of the fire. First, he chooses the circle on the lens that contains the area of the fire. Then he simply refers to a calibrated dial to find the acreage of the fire. Uh, Pembroke, go DW. Go DW, Pembroke. Roger, ready with uh, FP-41? Roger, Tom. Uh, Roger, number one, today's date, August 6, 62. Number two is 17. Number three, ODW. Number four, 1517 Eastern Standard. Number five, 1521 Eastern Standard. Number six is Master Township. Number seven, lot 24, concession four, break. Uh, lot 24, concession four, Roger. Roger, number eight is seven acres. Number nine, pine and spruce. Number 10, mixed. Number 11, west 25. Number 12, white bark, a white bark. Number 13, northwest two miles. Number 14, by aircraft. Number 15, 3,000 feet. Is that beaver ready yet? Number 16, Pembroke. The firebots will be down in the dock in a few minutes. Radio, uh, 18, you better start loading. Yes, and 19, yes, how? Roger, Tom. Uh, the chief would like to have a word with you. Hello, Tom. What does it look like? Looks pretty bad here, Ray. She's getting away from me now. How's that beaver coming? I'm sending the beaver. It'll be leaving in a few minutes. Uh, you better water drop till they get there, then come back for the pump unit. The crew gets ready to go in the beaver, dropping immediately the maintenance work they've been doing at headquarters. At the same time, additional equipment and food is made ready to be picked up by the otter. 
All the equipment is boxed in units exactly the right size to go through the cargo drop hatch in the planes. The fire boss goes with the crew in the beaver, taking only portable equipment on this first trip. Backpack pumps, axes and shovels. As the beaver leaves for the scene of the fire, the otter is already water dropping in an effort to hold back the fire front. When a lake is long enough for both landing and takeoff in a straight line, the tanks can be filled in 18 seconds from touchdown to takeoff. The plane should be traveling at about 40 miles an hour to force water through the intake tubes. As a safety precaution, these otter and beaver pilots wear crash helmets and carry no passengers when using the planes for water dropping. The water is released from the tanks in two seconds. Water dropping is primarily a holding action to keep down the acreage of the fire. It must be followed up by ground control or the effect may be wasted. Pembroke, ODW. ODW, Pembroke. Roger, let me speak to the chief ranger. Right here, Tom. Uh, Ray, I've been water dropping, but it's uh, getting ahead of me. I have only about uh, 20 minutes gas left, and I'll have to come back in. Uh, has the beaver left for here yet? He should be in sight now, Tom. If you can see him through the fire, so much the better. Then come back here for the cargo, it's all ready. Yeah, Roger, ODW. ODW, OBY. We're going to circle the fire first before we land. Are you going back now? Uh, Roger, OBY. I'll wait till you're down. Before the beaver brings the crew down, the fire boss assesses the path of the fire and its possible behavior, then works out a basic plan of attack. We're definitely going to need the pumping unit. And can you see if you can bring back about three more men? All right, I'll radio for it. Take it easy. ODW. The otter returns to headquarters as the beaver brings the crew in to land. A simple log dock is built as soon as possible so that later planes can unload more easily. The beaver takes off again to point the direction for the ground crew so they'll be able to take the shortest route to the fire. arrived back at headquarters, ready to load the cargo. Three more firefighters will go along to join the other crew. Parachutes of the right size for the weight of each container are provided for the cargo drop.
only a regulation pike pole should be used to push a plane away from a dock, safety regulations must be rigidly enforced where planes are concerned, especially since emergency help brought in to fight a fire may not be familiar with planes. Meanwhile, the beaver is dropping water as part of the general plan being carried out by the ground crew. By means of walkie-talkie communication with the plane, the fire boss can be sure that the water will be placed where he wants it. The ground crew does the best they can with hand tools until the larger equipment arrives. communication with the approaching otter, the fire boss uses an orange smoke flare to mark the location he has chosen for the cargo drop. No one is allowed on the drop area until the aircraft signals that it has finished dropping cargo. The ground crew is able to get much closer to the leading front of the fire when water from the beaver is used to cool the area. The otter brings the three extra firefighters to land after they have helped with the cargo drop. They will follow the trail to the fire left by the earlier crew while the otter goes to help the beaver with water dropping. care must be taken when two planes are dropping water at the same time. One must be designated flight leader and the other keep its distance. When the lake is only two miles away, the planes working together can deliver 5,000 gallons of water an hour to the fire. This will have an appreciable effect on the fire and is also good for the morale of the ground crew. They work with less strain when they know the planes are on the job too. Constant radio communication must be maintained between the ground crew and the planes. Small spot fires sometimes get started by sparks blown from the main fire. 
In some cases, they can be totally extinguished quickly and easily by the planes alone, although these spots will have to be checked later by the ground crew. The pilots have an overall view of the fire and should make progress reports to the ground crew. Portable ODW, the fire is breaking through in the northeast corner. I'm sending down a photograph of the whole area. An hour before sunset, the otter continues to water drop, while the beaver returns to get camping equipment for the ground crew, blankets and tents, all packaged to fit the beaver cargo hatch. Even though they're getting the fire under control, most of the ground crew will be there for a week. They sleep in relays and only for short periods so that all have a chance to get some rest. When the otter returns the next morning, the fire is well under control. Although there is still a lot of work to be done, the fire boss is no longer essential now that the extreme danger is past. He returns to headquarters to be ready in case of fire in another locality. Even after a forest fire has been brought to the point where it's no longer spreading, several days of hard work may be necessary to put it out. Mopping up operations also take a long time. The ground crew must wet down every smoldering piece of wood, and during the following week, the area should be patrolled by plane very frequently, looking for hot spots where fire might break out again. At the end of the work, all the equipment must be carried on foot to the lake if a helicopter is not available. Fire pilots who protect our forests are experts on fire hazards and how to deal with them. But this is only groundwork for the exacting and versatile flying they must be able to do. Their work is dangerous, but it puts them in a position to do a great deal to prevent the destruction of property and the loss of life that forest fires bring about each year. Across Canada, aircraft are proving more and more useful as a firefighting tool when properly coordinated with the work of the ground crews. The ground crew is still the key element in the suppression of a fire of any size. Aircraft are expensive, 
and no one type has been found ideal for all requirements. But field experience is showing an increasing number of ways in which aircraft can help to protect the forests of Canada.